G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. I'm about to travel on a beautiful journey today and I want to bring you with me. And I'm also here to show you what I'm about to paint today, that you can do it. There's the size of my canvas before I get started. And I would also like to get the colors going up the screen that I'm going to use in this tutorial. Uh, beautiful seascape, landscape, water, rocks, shadows, depth, all that beautiful, wonderful stuff. So let's go. I've got some craft paint down here. It's just a soft body titanium white and I want to put some of this retarda in there. Now this retarda is clear. It looks like baby oil but it's not baby oil and this is going to slow down the drying time of this acrylic paint. So I want to grab my putter on a brush and just mix the retarda with this paint. Okay so the sky is going to be pretty much the top half of the painting. So I'm just going to paint the top half of the canvas here for now. Get all this in there. Now I'm pushing it into the tooth of that canvas, getting it everywhere and then I'm going to come to the tip of this brush as I normally do with my skies and stroke it left and right like a pure gentleman to get our wonderful sky colours in there okay. Now I'm using a linser and permanent a linser and this time instead of magenta just to see the difference there in value but that's what I want. Now I want to get me sky on me put her on a brush the sky color which is cerulean blue. Now I'm just going to start at the top of the canvas and now I want to bring that down in X strokes but I'm not coming on and off the canvas I'm keeping my brush contacted to the canvas so I'll get more drag. Okay, I'm still on the canvas. Look, there we go in slow motion. I'm not lifting it off and doing it. There we go. Keeping it on the canvas, stroking it. Now I'll stroke it left and right again, just to see the gradient of that top half fading down to a lighter color. And just have a look at it, analyze your work. Look at this, a bit, bit iffity effity there. Just simply, Stroke it together. It's your painting, it's your journey. Take your time and enjoy the travel. So back down here, I'm grabbing the grey, but I want a little bit of this alindrin to give me that colour there. Look at that. Don't want it too dark because it dries dark acrylics. Remember that. These colours do not have retarder in them. I'm going to have some trees there, so I just need this mainly at the bottom here. So look at this. The way that's sitting on the canvas and blending into the sky there. Where it touches the dry canvas it'll go darker but I'm not worried about that we're going to water there. Now I want to bring this, I'll come all the way across and then bring it up to the blue and slowly evaporate in the blue. I can push it up with some X-Grokes to get it a little bit higher and fading away more and there I'll just stroke it left and right and that's the fact. Jack. Now I'm picking up some white on my fan brush, both sides of it chiseled on so it's nice and flat. I've got some grey there also. Now we'll start at the top, or oh, where would I start here? I want some cumulus cloud about here, so I'm going to grab the corner of this brush. I know I'm going to have some trees and rocks here, so I want this about here lifting up. Now I'm going to start pushing it on and letting the brush make the wonderful turmoil twisting bits and bobs. The footprint of this cloud is important to keep it open. Now down here I'm picking up the purple. I don't want to go bringing that up there if I can help it. And just stop if you're running out. That cloud's done. Grab yourself a blending brush and a Chuck's kitchen towel. They're the best to do all your blending. Now I grab the corner of this brush. It's clean as buggery and I'm going to just watch. Control the top of that cloud control it there we go over here soften the edges a little bit just killing those ugly brush strokes now I'm going to clean that paint off and now I'm going to start adding turmoil see how it's a big brush when you go from the corner to the whole base of it and twist it you're adding turmoil and lovely bits of cloud luster within your painting in your sky there and we're going to continue this so I'm going to clean my fan brush and go again I am not sure where I was up to. I finished putting this cloud on, I think. Uh, I don't know if the camera was on or off. Now I've cleaned the brush. I've blended that the same way I've blended that one. And I just simply want to get the bottom clouds now. Just something down here, but lineal, meaning just long, 
like so. I'll put one there first and I'll quickly, leaving the top there and pulling this all the way down, moving your brush, whatever's comfortable for you, tickling the tops. And I want to pull this down into that purpley polluted horizon colour there. There we go. Just something like that. I'm, I'm just going to something there. This is just right in the horizon where it's kissing the water. Now I've got some grey here, I just want a little bit of grey, not too much of this into the clouds there. The clouds are still wet, don't dry them yet until you're completely finished. Otherwise the realness of them won't happen. Now I'm just kind of finding the bottoms of the clouds and bringing this up into the body of the cloud. Bits of weather here, just in these front ones here, bits of grey coming up, creating the dark bottom of the clouds. It can have a, probably a little bit scattered in there. Now I want to keep the bottom of that sharp and then blend that grey up into the cloud body just so as we've got depth, weather, water, whatever's inside a cloud. Depth, weather and water I suppose. Makes sense to me. Now for my yumminess I've got a little bit of cadmium yellow. I just want to put a bit of that into the white because you'll normally use the white for the yumminess but having it a bit powder yellow, lime, um, lemony yellow like this that just makes up for sunlight within the cloud of the middle of the daytime. And I simply want to caress the top, make it look like it's coming around and see this grey hitting the white. At the moment it's flat like that but I want to get the yellow and make it look like clumps of yellow so it's bringing that cloud to life and coming home to you. So I'll get the top of this yellow, just tantalising it like that into that grey like I was just explained with my glovey fingers and over here we're just putting yumminess within the grey and venturing out into the white. Don't overdo it, you can very easily overdo this. Uh, we'll, we'll blend that and just see how it's varying. So I'll do this side first, I'm loving, I'm, I'm leaving the top hard and fading the bottom half of that down into the cloud body there. Now these brushes are very easy to use. Simply message me on Facebook, links in the description below if you want to purchase them. The blending brushes that I use, you get three brushes. I'm blending this down into there. Just trying to make some harsh bright edges with that yellowy white colour. You get a two inch, one and a half inch and the yellow putter on a brush. And you can see how that's just added total bullshit to your sky. Now have a look, you don't really need it for realistic sakes but I might put a little bit just down here somewhere, who knows how much of it we're going to see. But just to finish the charisma of the art, if that makes sense. Now give me a comment below, tell me where you're from, who you are, even if you're a regular, tell me who you are, where you're from. I've given this area dry and along here. But before I paint the next bit on, I want to mix the water up so I can put the water on and bring everything over it instead of trying to paint the water to things and making it look iffity affity. I'm mixing up the water. First, I've got some Alinsrin and the French Ultramarine. I want to make up the dark vibe of that. But I am making it more of a cool colour, meaning more blue in there because I want a dark vibe in the water get it darker, I'll add red. Probably oh, a bit of, that'll do. I'm just looking for that dark vibe within the water. Now I'm going to need this paint to map in the water. So what I need now is to get that craft paint and just map on so those watercolours all blend smoothly together. So grabbing my craft paint, I'm only going to do the pocket where the water is. So we pretty much get this on our canvas. Now see that where the sky, I'm not going to that. I'm just, I'm not going up to it. I'm just going below it a bit, down here. Now all over here is gonna be beach sand, but I want that to merge with the water. So I'm still priming it up with this craft paint. 
Okay, I'm grabbing some masking tape and I don't want this right on the white paint, otherwise I'll have a white ridge of paint there. I'm finding my horizon line's about there, so I wanna put this there. Get it nice and reasonably straight, there we go. Now the white paint that I put on is not up against this masking tape. If it was, when you peel it off, you've got a white ridge of paint there. It's just painted beyond it. So the actual blue color now is going to be there. I'm grabbing the turquoise. I'll just simply map in my water first. So I'll start over here, bring that to the tape. There we go, water's there, water's there. Now see how that white craft paint has allowed this to glide along there beautifully and smoothly. Now it's gonna to come to about here and about there, that's where the water's gonna be. So now I'll get this pushed on, come across there, there's a bit of shore out there as well. We're gonna have some beautiful perspective in this painting. Now see, that's just flared out into that white area, which is good. So just getting some of this paint, oh, look how thick that is, it doesn't matter, just to dull it down and push it into the color there. There we go. Yeah, it's not so loud and heavy now. And I wanna get some of the sand now coming into this water. Then we'll put the darker bits of junk and seaweed at the shallow end of the water. Okay, I've got yellow ochre. I want to just slowly add that into the white here because I want it like a pretty pale white sand, not too yellow. Now we're simply going to paint this onto the watercolour there, a bit down here. Get it to the watercolour. Whoa, see that blue? I don't want that blue in there. What happened there? Oh, that's because there's blue all the way up there. Anyway, we're going to pull that to the, to the blue and then just come to the tip of this brush and push it together so there's no hard line where they're meeting. It's sort of hard to tell where they're meeting. Okay, now I'll add the darker bits of water. So this color down here that we mixed, we're gonna add some of this in. So my water is here. I want a little bit here first, right? And then I'm gonna kind of get bits, doing it left and right, don't just, I want these bits looking straight, but I'm stamping and I'm on. I want a bit of darkness out here. Maybe some little bits out here. There we go. I'm going to grab me putter on a brush that I've washed and I'll come from the blue side and I'll just kind of push it, push it, push it. Now I will distort it a little bit and push it again, distort it a little bit and push it again, push it again, just distort it a bit. Distorting it meaning I'm coming down like this on it while the paint's still wet. I can manipulate it, see? I want the brush strokes finished in a left and right position like that. This turquoise out there, just maybe some darker bits of that as well. Wipe the bulk off and pull that as well. I will pull the tape off. I'm pretty sure I'm finished with that. Hopefully there's no white ridge of paint out there. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful, nice, tight horizon line. Now I've dried my painting, but it's still a bit rubbery. I'm grabbing some titanium white with a brush. I've choose to use a dagger brush and I've got this one to scramble it back into the water. And what I want to do is say like here, let's get the water on the edge of the bank. So we pretty much go like this, wherever it is. This is the water hitting the sand. That'll do. Break up some of this with the brush, just so it's not a hard line. Now the paint's rubbery and so forth. This other brush is going to leave the bottom half of that line tight and you just simply hit and zigzag it back into the water area, like so. Is that camera down there? Yes it is. Like so. 
and the, the painting is a little bit dry. You want it a little bit dry, not 100% dry, otherwise this is even more difficult to do. If you're a seasoned artist, you'll get through it, but if you're a beginner, you need it a bit wet and rubbery, but not fully wet. And we're coming into the water, because as we go along, this will gradually have some other brighter bits there. I'll just show you on this little bit. And pull that back into the water as well. So it's just got little breaking bits of water banding. Gonna be lots of rocks here, but where you won't see the rocks, we probably get that off there. We might have some water out here somewhere. Stop, because this paint is very I'm just blurring this back. This is in the distance, but you'll see it in between rocks here and there. So that's why I'm putting this out here. Watch the video a couple of times just to get a gist of what I'm actually doing here. Maybe a bit of water there. Stop. Depending how rubbery and dry your paint is, how far you can go with this before you start scrambling it back. Now this looks a bit weird at the moment, but once we put our rocks in front of it and stuff, it'll make sense. And now we can finish off the rest here like Do a bit at a time and scrumble it back, keeping those brush strokes left and right, left and right, and then coming back here. Still left and right with the scrumbling. And any of this bit that you think, hmm, bit iffy affity, you can hide it with rocks. Because this is gonna, this this painting is gonna have a lot of big boulders and rocks on it. Give it some caressing stuff out there, like so. I better stop and scramble that back because it's a bit on the dry side. Just the top half of that line. Scramble it back. Now just have a look at your water, see where you might need some other bits of, you know, I might want some laying on top of that dark bit there, just laying across. Oh, I've killed it. Now I'll come back and have a look in a minute. I'll just fix that up. I might have dried mine a little bit too much. Now, I don't need to scramble this back. I just need lots of light hitting bits and bobs of this dark stuff out there. Oh goodness, I just made a big boo-boo there. I'll sort that out. I'm gonna grab some of that sand color with a bit of gray. Let's go over here. Put a little bit of red, not too much. Just so we can get some damp um, vibe in the sand as well. Somewhere around here you can get vibes of damper sand. Let's say I'm just going to get it right under that white bit there and just kind of work out where I feel it receded back. And I'm just gradually following this shape to a degree along there so I'll get it nice and tight against there it's important to get it tight against that bit and then just follow the the shape there the cuppingness of it and the lay of it and we're just going to get it's kind of a damp sand vibe hopefully let me have a look in my monitor that's kind of looking damp I'm happy with that now here we can have this come and peek the hard bit of white there and this could be a nice piece all the way there with perspective it's on an angle now load your brush up out here somewhere and it's and like I said any ugly bits you cover up with rocks now that color that I had uh, where was it it was a bit of the gray in there in this sandy color and the alinsarin. What I want to do is just get a bit more of the yellow ochre and a bit more of the alinsarin just to get it warmer and darker. 
Now, I've mixed that to the degree I want. I'm grabbing a script liner. I've wet it so it's quite inky. And I want to twist it onto the tip of the brush just so I can nervously get a nice fine line of this just to the closest bit. So where's our water? I'll just try a little bit here. I want it very thin. You don't want this thick. Look at that, nice and thin under there. Stop, move along. It's just sitting this lapping water. There we go, onto the sand a bit better than what it is. Be a thicker shadow in there. I'm twisting it. I don't know if you can see. I'm twisting this as I'm moving it along. Nervously twist it. And that's it. I've picked up my dagger brush again. Not too much paint in it. Because where some of this is dragged, let's see if I can do it here. I just want some of these darker lines within it. But not too heavy. Just sort of, they can be scratchy. And if you feel, no, nah, I don't want to do that, just simply don't do it. Now I'm grabbing the French Ultramarine Blue and the Permanent Linsrin, and I want to make up a very dark colour here. And I want it, I don't want to make it black, but it, it, hopefully it'll look black on the um, actual painting. And this is coming straight off the painting. Actually, I'll use my bullshit stick so I can get a level crossing of that. Okay, somewhere around here, and I want to start bringing my um, groin of rocks. We call them a groin when they're out here. Now they're going to come lower than the horizon line, so let's say whereabouts about here. I'll start this way. I want it lower than the horizon line, coming there. See how straight this line is because of that bullshit stick? That's bullshittingly straight. Look at that, too easy. Now, the top of this, I'm going to start making with rocks. I'm making rolls and curls and bits and bobs, and then it's going to start coming over the horizon line here. The closer you come here, you might see some boulders coming down into it as well. But these now are pretty much about that high. and pretty much all the way along here. Because that's going to be all dark along here as well. Now what I need is my filbert brush so as I can um, get the rest of that mapped in to the height where I want it. The trees are coming from about here. And in the middle of these trees, I might have the odd palm or something. So I want to just see that cloud there. And then what I'm doing is probably getting the top line of these trees within the painting. Because this colour makes for perfect depth in your trees when you get the right combination going. Coming there. And they're sort of bowing over those rocks just there. It's not a big solid finish. And now it can, um, what I'm starting to do now is to get rid of the airy edge and start bringing it into a solid area. I've dried the painting. Um, if I rub this too hard, I'm gonna dig into it and give myself grief. So I don't wanna do that. I've done that to the degree I'm happy with. That's blocked in. I want to start getting some other rocks. So let's put, I've just got myself a flat brush now, get some kind of rock here. I want it kind of close to that, so I'm closing up the gap there to make up for perspective and get the bottom <laughs> reasonably rock like. There. Lots of. Little ones like, see how my hand's nervous? I'm going all over the place like a silly bugger. So I'm gonna grab my mouse stick, give me sturdy steadiness, bring some off the painting. The bottoms of them reasonably flat. And as we come closer, get rid of that double line there. As we come closer, we'll start to see the tops of our rocks. Rocks are not always round there, especially ones on the beach. We have square tops and 
curved rocks and arch tops, all sorts. So I'd like some of that distinctiveness within these. Uh, now I might put something in front of that. So when I highlight it, it'll sit this one in front of that. Bring it out there and then start making the base of this one. So instead of this being flat, it's slowly rounded like so. Just block it in. Lots of little stragglers running off them as well. This, this, this beach is really rocky. Now I've got some ideas off the internet for this. I just went and had a look at a few beach rock scenes, rocky beach scenes, just to get some idea that can stay in my mind long enough for me to paint it. And that's what I've done here today, just from what I've seen and can remember. That's where I've got all this idea from. I want something right in front of that, coming down. This just makes a nice dark base for our rocks. Now I'm just finishing it off. I've hidden, I felt that wet patch was a bit ugly so I've hidden that with a big rock. I've dried everything and I've mixed some grey into that paint just so as I can lace in some, I'm just going to, I'll do one or two here just to see if I could see if it's going to work and look like some shadow sitting in the sand there. So once I highlight it, it'll maybe look the part. And I've got to do at least some of this one just to see. Just so it doesn't look like it's floating on the sand there. And then when we highlight it, it'll sit this shadow down a lot better than what you see it at the moment. Continue just putting some of this shadow under some of the rocks. The sun's pretty much overhead, but it's overhead enough just to cast a slight shadow. And this water is pretty much sitting. It's a still day, so the water ain't thrashing and banging against these rocks with a lot of um, water hitting them. The water's just sitting around everything. So hopefully this shadow of everything is working. Now I want to finish these rocks. I want to get them underneath there going that way. So when I bring the trees over, they'll come over it. So I want to get them in first. Just simply got some black and gray. I'll, I'll get the gray first and add the black as I need it. There we go. So now I'm going to add another color of this. Now that dark colour is already going to do for the dark colour. This, these two here are pretty much the mid-tone and the highlight for me stones I want to have on that groin. I'll turn this brush around and I want rocks like this. Leaving some of this purple. These are coming right close to the water. Now once you've done this with the highlight, you can squint your eyes or look into a camera lens and see if there's any areas that you feel are under, under darkened which need darkening up a bit more. You can always scatter some darks back because I feel when doing this, you're always fine tuning it going back and forth with your light and darks until you're happy with the marriage of the two. While I've got this colour, some of these big rocks here, I want to get blocked in as well. And any bits of that purple you do see, it'll um, make up for the darks within it. And I feel I will have to go and put some actual darker grey within this just to make it look vibingly realistic. I want 
all this to be rock here and then another bit scooting out there with light hitting it uh, we can probably have just like that Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just grab some of the black and mix a lot darker. I don't want it pure black, but I want it reasonably darker than what I just put on there. Just to crest in the blackness where I feel it's shy and then finish it off with highlights. So mainly along here, I want it coming from underneath the trees and tinkering out here onto some of that. So it's very dark under there. I feel some of these bigger ones need the little bit of darkness within them, coming from the bottom, radiating around. Okay, I'm grabbing the gray now. I'll just get most of that darkness out of the brush. I'm grabbing the grey and I just want it slightly, there's the mid-tone right next to it, I just want it slightly bright. Now I'm going to do these boulders here, I'll do that once I get the foliage on top so the shadows can make sense. So we want pretty much light refracting now on lots of this stuff. Uh, where are we going to get some? Right there. Can I have a look at that? Is it make, it's sort of making sense, yes. Some top of another rock right there in front of that bit there and something in there. This actual colour that I'm putting on now is pretty much making the rock. Mm. I'm just nervously shaking it along. See where I can kind of get some light hitting it. Just to make it look reasonable. How's that look in the monitor? Well, that looks a bit weird, that one. I'm not happy with that. So I feel... I can always add... Um, darkness back where you feel you've done too much damage. I will actually just highlight this, but the bits out there I'll do with a bit brighter colour. Once I put the foliage over it, leave good solid dark bits here and there. You know, you can even have some long weird ones, don't some slithered ones, don't have a more uniform. Down here, I want to come lower to create shadow from what's going to be hanging over it. Because it's a sunny day, I'm just grabbing pure grey in my brush and a bit of white. Just so as I can crisp the slightest light hitting some of those bigger rocks out there. Daylight for instance this. Work out where you feel you might want it. I 
I need a bit there just to sink that one back. Just to finish this off before we go up to here now, I'm just grabbing some of the white and probably if I've got a bit of turquoise I can destroy that with. There we go. And I just want the slightest bit of water kissing bits of the rocks here and there. Just out on the edge of this groin, I want some white there. And I need this brush chiseled just to wiggle some water, break it up hidden against the groin there, just like that. That's a bit more controllable. Uh, a little bit around here, a bit of water. Now, I want to grab my, I'll mix it over there actually, get the skin off it, I'll wet it a bit. I want to get the French Ultramarine and the Yellow Oxide and mix up a green. So I've grabbed more Yellow Ochre. And we made the green. There we go. This will be the first layer of green. It's pretty much a dead looking green. I can grab some more blue. This is going to make for realistic greens in your trees. Okay, so I've got my filbert brush. I've got that, it's kind of khaki looking green. And I'll simply just sit it on top of all this dark matter here and trace it into the foliage, leaving a lot of that purple there. Get it up there, airy where it's airy, and then start joining it down where it's more of it bringing it into our trees. Now see down here, I want to get it. This is the first color. The highlight color is the one that comes over. So bring it towards that darkness a bit. These are smaller out there because they're further away. Like that, see? I'll get some of this over there. Filbert bushes. Filbert trees, bringing it over there. Look at that, over that darkness a bit, leaving a lot of the purples there. And you can be mistaken for thinking this first layer looks a bit weird and stampy, but we'll bring it home with the detail in the next two passes of the other colors. I'm trying to keep these strokes the same thickness, not too blobby, like that. You wouldn't want to do that. Now I've dried that. We're going to add a bit more green. So I will grab, I want to try some of this cadmium yellow and the yellow ochre first, and then mix some of the French ultramarine just to get a different green. Now the more yellowy green I want, I'll simply add more yellow, but the more blue green I want, I'll just see, watch this bit here, it's a darker green. So I want this darker green first, and then I'll add some more yellow to it. So, all right, we'll start over here. We want a bit of green maybe here. Where I want to highlight it, I'm probably not going to put, where I grabbed that paint, I can't see that. I'm probably not going to put this color where I want to highlight it. I want to bring this down. I've got to mix it a bit more, it feels like. Can we see it? Yes, we can. Leaving some of those darker first bits of green we put on there. Now see that dark? You're popping like here. You're popping over enough so you can still see some of the little black doodars within there. Let's get that back there, we didn't get this. And then if you look in your monitor or, or camera lens, squint your eyes, you would actually see ridges like here, where are we, about there. You would actually see ridges where you can start highlighting stuff and bringing it in different directions. And it just starts making that bullshit come alive within your painting. Get the top of all here done. Now 
now I can see what I'm doing. I want to deliberately leave some of that darker khaki green behind there. Down the bottom here, let's get some of this on our darks there. Try and create depth under these stones. Don't forget to give me a comment below. Tell me where you're from, who you are, what your name is, what do you think of this painting? Is it up your alley? Is it sort of giving you ideas or you just don't like it? Give me your vibe. Now what I will do down here is I'll just pull in a lot more yellow into that green. Now to make it a more yellow green, let's just see if this is going to shine. Or is it clashing? with what's already there. It's not too bad, I suppose. I might need it a little bit more yellow. I'll have a look in a minute. I'm just trying to get the bulgeness of these foliage hit with extra light here, and especially down over the darks there. All right, I've just wiped that brush, I'll wipe it a bit more. And now I'm just picking up the cadmium yellow. I do want it to get a bit tainted with that green. I've wiped it too much, I'll pick up some more of that green. Just to get a value of some different leaves and foliage being hit by light, just to finish it off. Over here, very tiny Bits of light hitting this section here. Bright bit radiating here. Just some kind of different tree that reflects a different light compared to the others. Try not to kill it with all this. You just want to go minimal. Get something highlighting there. Okay, I'll just whack a signature down here and I wanna thank everyone who supports my content on my YouTube channel and in my Patreon platform. If you're not a patron or a member of my YouTube channel, simply hit the links below. Hit the join tab if you wanna be a member of my YouTube channel and you have the opportunity to support my content every month. Much appreciated. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There you go, that's not too shabby. We've got an ocean, coastal, rocky beach inlay groin with some trees on there. We could have put a palm out there, but I would have been going on till the cows come home and we need to finish it. And I know you can do it. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, you tell your friends, but if you don't, you tell everybody. Also, I want you to check out this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.